One of my favorite overlooked facts about Nintendo is just how old the company is. Nintendo has been around since the 19th century, which means Nintendo is older than airplanes, than air conditioning, than electric refrigeration, uh, older than radio. That's how old Nintendo is. And the origins of Nintendo trace back to one specific building. This building, which is where Nintendo established its original headquarters back in the year 1889. Now, Nintendo has since moved on to a much larger, much more traditional headquarters elsewhere in Kyoto. And for the decades in between, this original building has sat there unused and kind of dilapidated. At least that was the case until the year 2022, when plans were announced to turn the former Nintendo headquarters into a all-inclusive luxury high-end hotel called Marufukuro. Now, from the minute this hotel was announced, I was fascinated by it. They seem to be going out of their way, going to great lengths to preserve as much of the original building as possible, while also adding new buildings and new infrastructure to make it function as a boutique hotel. Now, on a recent trip to Japan, I reached out to Marufukuro, and they responded by actually inviting me to come out to this hotel and stay for a couple days and just experience it. Um, and if you know me at all and you know my affection for Nintendo, uh, of course I said yes. So today I'm gonna be taking you on my journey to stay at the hotel built inside Nintendo's original 1889 headquarters in Kyoto, Japan. I hope you enjoy it. Now, this trip coincided with my trip to Super Nintendo World with my friends Alex and Takuji, and so we took a train from Osaka, where Universal Studios Japan is located, to Kyoto, which takes roughly an hour. Hi. So from the millisecond we arrive in front of this place, the hotel staff appeared, immediately took our bags and escorted us to this sort of lounge, living room, lobby area while they got our room ready uh, and encouraged us to, to have a, a drink while we waited. The lighting is quite dramatic. He smells it for me to make sure it... Oh, thank you. It's kind of a weird vibe with this bartender. Look at what he's doing with his foot. Hey, come by. <laughs> the, the, the lighting under the chin, like he's gonna tell a scary story. <laughs> so nice. Foot's still going. <laughs> This guest lounge, in case it's not clear, was amazing. They had these commemorative keychains you could get that were based on the original placard that's still there from the original Nintendo headquarters. There was also one of my favorite things, this painstaking Lego recreation of the entire building, the whole hotel, which if you look closely, I'm 99% sure is using a lot of pieces from the Mario Lego set. Like those are unmistakably Mario bricks, right? I'm not tripping. By the way, I checked the plaque next to this Lego recreation of Marufukuro and learned that that was actually built by a guy named Junpei Mitsui, who is the only certified Lego builder in Japan. He actually has a whole YouTube channel full of stuff that is mind-blowingly good. Here's a link to that if you want to see it. But back, okay, back on topic. The concierge comes back out and he explains that this hotel is actually four separate buildings and they are appropriately playing card themed. Spade, Diamond, Heart, and Club. Those of you who know your Nintendo history will know that this is in reference to the fact that Nintendo got their start as a playing card company. First Hanafuda cards, then Western style playing cards. It's the first of many, many subtle, tasteful references to Nintendo's history that you'll find in this hotel. Anyways, he explains that this building, the one that we're currently in, 
is the same building that held Nintendo's original headquarters. So the reception area, the guest lounge, all of that is located in Nintendo's original tiny office. If you ask me, that makes this building the most historically significant out of them, which is appropriate because it's also the one that they've modified the least and kept the most original parts of. This building used to be the Nintendo headquarter. Mm. And this diamond is the new building designed by Tadao Ando. And third one, uh, the uh, owner of Nintendo used to live in this place. Ah, yeah, Yamauchi-san. Their family lived here. And then the second and third floor was a guest room for visitors. Mm. I see. And so which is gonna... Which of these is my room? That's the Your room is on uh, 207. Yeah. This place. Oh, God. Interesting. Cool. Uh, Speaking of that history, this is also the building that contains a really incredible area that he brought us to, the Marufukuro Library. This room was incredibly cool. It had actual vintage Nintendo hardware right alongside contemporary art inspired by Nintendo, alongside books in English and Japanese chronicling the history of the company. A book on John Cage's 433. I think that's where Nintendo got the inspiration for the Switch eShop music. I gotta say, I was really impressed by this library area and by just how many pieces they were able to find that somehow marry the world of Nintendo with the world of fine art. There was an artist's rendition of what a Nintendo Switch might look like 2,000 years in the future. There was a Famicom made entirely of paper, complete with its internal circuitry. There was a lot to take in here. I was expecting a pretty standard library with maybe a couple game consoles thrown in and that's it. But seeing it in person, it was clear that Marufukuro had put a lot of time and consideration into this library space, and I think that's pretty cool. Pokemon. So, Pokemon card. Oh, wow. I've seen this artist, actually. Daniel Arshan. Yeah, Daniel Arshan. So cool. It's much more connected to Nintendo than I was expecting, actually. I didn't know that. I just have never seen the original Game Boy box. I didn't know it said Handy Game Machine on it. Now, there was one piece of vintage Nintendo hardware that was actually absent from this museum. This. This, if you're unfamiliar, is the Game Boy Micro, and it's one of my favorite Nintendo handhelds of all time. I actually had one of these as a kid. I found it at like a pawn shop at the beach for like 20 bucks, but sadly I lost mine a million years ago. I've always wanted to have a Game Boy Micro back in my collection again, so recently I went shopping for one on Baii. Wait, did I get two? <laughs> I don't remember ordering two. This is like the McDonald's DS all over again. Baii is a service that allows you to shop on Japan-only retailers like Rakuten and Yahoo Auctions Japan and buy items that normally aren't available to international buyers. It is hands down the best way to shop for rare video game stuff, often for prices far below the markups you'd see on places like eBay. I've been using Baii for years, but they just added a new feature recently that I really love. Now when you use the search bar in Mercari, you might notice an auto-translate and search button, which automatically translates your English search query into Japanese, which results in much more results, vastly more hidden gems that you probably couldn't find on your own. It's extremely cool. To try out Baii for yourself, just click the link in the description below. New users will get a special coupon for 10% off their first Baii purchase. with the uh, Nintendo game? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Oh yeah, very much. Very, very much? You yeah. still play? Mm-hmm. Oh. That's my uh, my expertise. I make uh, YouTube videos about Nintendo ah. and Nintendo history sometimes. Oh, but, yeah. but you still still play the yes, game? Yes, I do. Oh, I do, I do. Oh. In Japan, like, uh, turn three is like, like very huge shit. Mm -hmm. I play now. Splatoon 3. Oh, yeah, he's a Splatoon 3 yeah. player. Yeah? yeah. Uh, but. Uh, um, Nintendo USA mm -hmm. present here, mm. and he said not not like this in the US. No, definitely I, not. Huh? Was it a, a Doug Bowser? Was the? Oh yes, that was him. He's here. Yeah. Wow. He's like huge. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. not too three. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's true. In US and New York, like, not too bad thing. Yeah, it's like semi little popular. <laughs> it's a real bar. 
Across the hall was this, the Marufukuro Bar Counter, a fully stocked whiskey and gin bar that he explained to us had no bartender, where Marufukuro guests can go to make their own cocktails and drinks anytime they want, completely free of charge. I've never seen a hotel offer something like this. It's a really cool idea and something we got a lot of enjoyment out of. And from there, he showed me the room I'd be staying in. All right, so this one okay. is like a little tricky. And if you go right, and then a little bit more. Mm. And then keep keep pressing. I see. Then, right. I'll practice. Right. I love the keychain. Oh, oh thank you. Okay. Wow. Nice. Wow, what a nice room. Mm. This is the uh, original. Oh, all this we is just, original? We just paint, but designs are original. Nice. So this was the one of the guest rooms for the president of Nintendo's uh, at his the house? Owner, the owner of yeah. Nintendo. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Wow. Uh, one of the guest house. That's amazing. And every room has different uh, ハリティンですけどね、日本語で。ハリティンスティンス。ね、ベルベルハスディフェンビームス。わあ。あ、天井がこの装飾もはい、すごい。部屋全部の部屋違います。うん。アメイジング。デザインで、インテリアで、オール
Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Wow, it's a creepy guy. Mmm, -hmm. mm -hmm. it's pretty good. <laughs> Go ahead. Easy. 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 What is he saying? You see fur? What is he saying? What are you saying? You see fur. You see fur. You see. I have bad night Oh, night girls visits. don't have better hey. night visions. No, no, seriously. So as I alluded to earlier, there's another really cool thing about Marufukuro, which is that it has its own restaurant inside the hotel. The restaurant is called Karta, and it's overseen by this very prominent Kyoto chef named Ai Hosokawa. And for guests in the hotel, breakfast, lunch, and dinner are all served there every day for free. We share a cup of That's right. So this meal was incredible, but candidly, I don't consider myself the greatest at describing food. So in lieu of that, I'll just give you a 30 second visual summary of each course they brought to us that night. After dinner, my friends head back to Tokyo and I retire to my hotel room. Oh shit, I got breakfast in five. <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes. As for the next few days of my stay, I mostly just spend it relaxing. I go for a couple walks. Do a little more amateur photography on my cheap split frame film camera. I watch a little TV. I go back to Carta twice where I have one of the greatest breakfasts of my entire life. I enjoy some coffee and snacks in the hotel's lounge. And then at one point, it occurs to me that it might be fun to actually walk from Marufukuro, the site of Nintendo's original 1889 headquarters, to their new current day headquarters, which is also in Kyoto. So I take a stroll with a lot of detours and check out the new Nintendo building from the outside. Mario's house. It's where Mario goes to work. It's Mario's, well, it's Mario's house, but it's also Mario's job. It's Mario's house. Now, is there a lot to see at the new Nintendo building? Not really. Nintendo of Japan is notorious for its super sterile, generic office building atmosphere, both inside and outside the building. So short of the big Nintendo logo and the security guard out front, there ends up being very little to actually look at. But in hindsight, it's kind of cool to imagine that I was standing there just a few dozen feet away from people who were actively developing new Nintendo games. Based on the timing of my trip, there was definitely a few people hard at work on Super Mario Wonder and all sorts of other cool stuff we probably haven't even seen yet. That's Mario's house. Before long, I'm reaching the end of my three-day stay at Marufukuro, and it's time for me to pack my things and get ready to catch a bullet train back to Tokyo. Before I go, I flip through Marufukuro's guest book and admire some of the very cute drawings and messages that past guests have left, and leave one of my own. 
Essentially, I end up writing that my stay at Marufukuro was the highlight of this particular trip to Japan for me. And I really did mean that. I make my way to the Kyoto Shinkansen station where I briefly run into Joey, and pretty soon I'm on the bullet train back to Tokyo looking out the window and just thinking about what a cool, unique experience this was. I want to reiterate a huge, huge thank you to the team at Marufukuro for inviting me to stay there. If you want to know more about Marufukuro, you can check out their website at marufukuro.com. Also, I feel like I should probably say, if you're curious about the split frame camera I used for my photography on this trip, it's called the Kodak Ektar H35. I really love mine. I've been using it for, geez, probably two years now, and it's still alive. Uh, you can pick one up on Amazon for, I think, around 45 bucks. I'll put a link to that in the description below. And lastly, another huge thanks is in order to Bai for sponsoring this video. Once again, my Bai sign up link is in the description below. Thanks for watching and have a good week.